Brilliant. Uh, so just tell us who you are and uh, what it is you do. Um, I'm Richard Perry. I'm a uh, writer-director, uh, sometimes separate, um, sometimes together. And um, uh, so I shift a lot between uh, writing projects, uh, script development uh, and uh, script developing projects and uh, directing other people's scripts and uh, directing my own. And uh, a lot of BBC idents, um, commercials and music videos. And uh, how did you get into being a writer and director? Um, I fell in love with it when I was 13, I think it was. And um, a friend of mine was uh, like an actress at a youth theatre and the director was looking for an assistant director and I uh, met him and just said, oh, I want to be a director and I think I do anyway, you know, that age. And uh, he said, yeah, no, come on board. So I worked out uh, a lot of the local theatre and one summer, I think I was 15, I just decided to make a film. So I wrote it and it turned out to be 85 minutes and we shot it all over the summer holidays with friends from school and stuff like that. And um, obviously it was rubbish, but uh, it, you know, it was a great learning curve and, and I just fell in love with that. And watching films and the way that I used to respond to it, the, the, the connectivity to it, and I just knew that I wanted to make them. And from then, um, I went to film school, uh, but before that and during film school I was a runner a lot for music videos. And from there it's just making contacts and going further up the ladder really. Do you feel you have a style as a writer and director? And, and if so, like, when do you think you, you start to find it? Um, I think, uh, yeah, I mean I'm very old school. I mean I always say that I, I, I think I was born in the 50s, you know. Um, I. I I rely heavily on on static compositions. Uh, you know, I'm not very special effects driven. Um, if it aids the story, great. You know, but I, I think I'm more driven to character than I am necessarily plot. Um, I think genre wise, I'm always I'm always keen towards noirs, um, mystery side of the things. Uh, but then at the same time, you know, I can watch an epic and just love it. But it's uh, for me, it's all about character. Hmm. Um, so that's what. And uh, when you're writing, uh, how do you develop your characters? Um, it usually spawns off a really small idea. Uh, I'm just trying to think of one, one project, really. It, I mean, it was a project that I'm working on at the moment, um, is my own feature. A friend of mine just said one thing, and then from there, it just starts your mind going and thinking, oh, I could do it with like this, this, and this. And then, you put it into an A, B, C, D, E, F, G structure, linear, you know, everything's hunky-dory, you've got your beginning, middle and end, and then you can just sort of play around with it and see how you can change things up, see if you need flashbacks, if you don't need flashbacks, you know. Um, so that's, it just kind of has to start from one small idea and then expand, you know, whether it's an emotion or it's like a particular character that you see on the street and then you think, oh, I wonder what his life is like, and then you can just Mm. drum up what their personality is, you know. So what's your uh, average day? <laughs> um, usually it, it, uh, I get woken up at about 5am saying, Rich, we need you to come over and do this the interview shoot or something like that. Um, so I get up and then go over and do the shoot. And sometimes it was just hectic. Like it, it changes per day, but a lot of the last minute shoots that I do are because um, the TV world is very fast paced and very high tempo and say BBC idents and stuff like that, they'll just they'll just go, Rich, we need you tomorrow or in two hours and you just gotta kinda of be on call. Um, but then saying that and then if that if say if I'm not working, then I'll get up, usually go for a run, um, and then grab some coffee and just sit by the laptop and just go through pages and pages and pages. I think it's like it, it depending on whether you want to be a writer or, or or director or anything like that, you really need to use your spare time as much as possible to just sort of hone your craft, you know. I mean, I spend a lot of my time writing because I think that that's the most difficult aspect of, of filmmaking, you know. Um, it's very tedious, you're on your own a lot of the time, you don't know whether an idea works a lot of the time, you've got to try it and then you waste an entire day trying it and you think oh no that's rubbish but then you, you save it for later and you come back and it's all it's like a jigsaw puzzle a lot of the time and um, 
those days are great because it, it just depends on what type of person you are. Like, if you can handle being in a dark room on your own all day, you'll be great. But if you need constant people around you to tell you ideas and things like that, then, you know, writing is not the job for you, etc. Mm. So, yeah, to, to, sorry to, to answer your question, it changes per day. Okay. So, and uh, talking about how you uh, write and, and, and develop as a writer, how do you develop as a director? Um, the, uh, from a directing standpoint, it's just about making as much as possible, really, because you see what works and you see what doesn't work. I mean, I'm, I'm quite bullheaded in the sense that someone will tell me, you know, they'll read something and go, that won't work, you know, that's not, you need to do this, you need to do that, and I'll go, no, 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 no I need to try it myself. So you just shoot it yourself, and then you go, actually, no, they were right. But I need to know it for myself. So I think, like, from a, to practice your craft as a director, you just need to make as many films as possible you know even if the even if you just want to try something stylistic out you know there's so many avenues that you can use like um you know 5ds or anything you can get a hand of even iphones just to try different styles different angles different perspectives mm. you know and just construct a scene and then just edit it together and go oh i needed that shot so you write it down and you think next show and that, oh you know that's another thing every shot you do or every project you do you can be in the edit room and think, oh, I really needed a wide shot there. Why didn't I get a wide shot? But you just make note. You just go, next time, remember to get your wide shot, for example. So it's, it's just learning as you do. Really. Yeah. Would you say uh, making mistakes is the best way of learning, or, or do, you, do you try to yeah, I mean, make as little make, mistakes as possible? It's, it's best to make as little mistakes, mistakes as possible, but... If you're either spending your own money or you've got no money at all, then it doesn't obviously it doesn't matter too much. It's it's better to make the mistakes now when you're learning your craft than it is when you've got other people's money because as soon as you do that, you just get you know blacklisted. No one wants to work with you. You know that kind of stuff. And so the yeah, as you started out, just try and make as not try and make as many many mistakes. The mistakes don't matter. That's what I'm saying. Mm. It's best not to. I mean. I believe in your pre-production is just your best asset. You plan everything, you know. Other filmmakers are different. They, they rely a lot on improvising and, and changing things up and all that kind of stuff. But for me, it's when you're spending a lot of money, you just, you've got to get it right in pre-production. Mm, absolutely. And uh, do you have any, any burning uh, message that you, you want to tell people? That, uh... um, if you're not willing to sacrifice your life, don't do it. Because it will it will tear you up sometimes but at the end of the day the days that you succeed or you get a success or you get a compliment or you get you know a nominated for something then it's it makes it all worthwhile and you look at any top filmmaker that have made it they all say you know i've been through all of this and i've come out the other end you just have to listen to mcqueen's speech at the baftas and he just he was 40 something I think when he made his first feature and he was trying and trying and trying but you still come out the other end you know if you keep working at it that's kind of it really mm, brilliant and uh, wh where do you see yourself going next what have you got in the pipeline to, um, to work on I'm working with the second unit on something pretty big next year um, but for my own project where at the moment I've got a feature script that's going back and forth with the lead actor um, for, because for me from a writing point of view I think I mean, if you can, if you have that opportunity to cast it as you're writing, then that's fantastic because, you you know, you can bounce ideas all the time. And, and if you've got that lead actor and they're constantly looking at themselves, their own character, what they do, and me, I get to work around everyone else. I get to think about all the other characters. But they concentrate on their own. And then they might say, oh, well, I don't think my character would say this. I don't think my character would say that. And, yeah, those are all things you can do on set. But the earlier you can do them, the... You know the title of the script will become real. So we're just trying to get that script finished, and then um, we've got we've got a couple of producers at the moment, but they're just waiting to read it at, at the moment. So. Mm. And uh, how uh, how closely knit are you with producers? Do, do you find it hard to find producers, or? Um, I think it's hard to find producers at a lower level. Because a lot of the time, producers want to be directors, and they don't just want to be producers. If you're fortunate enough to meet just 
want to be producers it's great but then also you know there comes that whole bravado of being a producer like they, they might read something and go no, no no I don't like it and then they just don't do it and then it's really difficult uh, the higher end producers it's um, if you can find that link to them it's easy not I don't want to say easy it's you can meet them and the best producers if the top a list of producers will meet with you they'll read your script and if they don't like it, they just don't like it. Because they know that they don't want to miss out on anything. 